Hey everyone, this video we're going to be talking about how to use a list as a queue. So the easiest way to understand the queue data structure is actually first to understand the stack data structure. We built all of that in the previous video in pretty good depth, so understand those foundations and then come to this video. So to create a queue, what we're going to do is we're just going to use a list, so we'll create a variable and call it queue, and that's how you spell queue, it's Q-U-E-U-E. -U -E. It's not pronounced Q-E-U-E, although that is what my wife tends to say whenever she says Q for some reason, I don't know. So what we're gonna do is just assign it an empty list to our Q-E-U-E, and then we'll say dot append and pass in data one. And then we'll do that again, but now we're gonna do data two. Now with a stack, when we removed these, we would do it by saying Q dot pop with no arguments, and that is always going to remove the last element. So to see that, what we can do is we can print the queue, and then we can pop off the data and print queue one more time, like so. All right, so we start with this data. We have data one and data two. When we pop the data, it removes the element with the highest index farthest to the right. This is the default behavior of pop, and this is how we would create a stack. But when we were working with a queue, it's actually going to remove from the opposite end, it's going to remove from the left, so the lowest index, which is always going to be zero. So now when we run this, it starts with data one, data two, we remove an element and we're left with data two. So you can see data one was removed from the left. And if you want to visualize this, here's how you think about a queue. It's like a line for a roller coaster. Everybody gets in line waiting for like 24 hours and the first person in the line is the first person to ride the ride. So that would be data one in this case. We added that data first. When we pop the data, it's going to remove data one first. So that is how a queue structure works. So the only difference is that when we say pop, we have to put a zero in there to grab the item with the index zero. So let's modify our code that we created in the previous video to add vegetables to our favorite vegetable list, and we're going to turn it into a queue structure rather than a stack structure. So get rid of all this junk and go back to our code that we had. All right, so the only thing is, instead of pop, we have to say pop zero. And let's run this and try it out. We'll add some food into this, spinach, kale, broccoli. And now if we want to remove an element but the only way to remove is to remove spinach first and then kale and then broccoli. So we say R, that will remove spinach from the left. We say R again to get rid of the kale. Now we're just left with broccoli. If we add another element, it's going to add it to the right. So for example, we add bok choy. Now we have broccoli, bok choy. So that is how a queue structure works. Hopefully that was helpful. And now you understand the stack in the queue. For a queue, it's first in, first out, or FIFO. Or you can also think about it as last in, last out, or Lilo, which, you know, if you had a kid named Lilo, you could just call him Q. It's a cute nickname. Save you a lot of time, too, because Lilo is two syllables, Q is only one. But not a whole lot of people call Qs Lilos. Rather, you often hear them as Philos, first in, last out. And then for the stacks, you'll hear first in, last out, or last in, first out. So, yep, that's all I got for this, and stay tuned for the next video.